So this is a journal entry for interest expense. And there is a few ways you can write it. It depends on if uh, what you're doing is specified by cash, the interest actually getting paid in that moment, or whether it doesn't need to be paid in that moment, and instead it's an accrual that will mark as a liability to be paid in the future. All right, so we'll walk through this and show you what I mean by that. So we experience this interest expense right here, right? So interest expense of $400, all right? So interest expense, we know expenses hit our income statement right here. So expenses hit our income statement, and this is gonna be a debit, all right? So we're debiting interest expense. I'm just gonna abbreviate interest expense, interest expense for 400, all right? So that's our debit. And our credit, our credit can be one of two things. And it could be a credit to cash if we're gonna pay in cash, all right? So if we're gonna pay cash right then. Sometimes you're, I mean, the thing about interest is you're always, in, like, that's the thing. You experience interest when you sleep, when you breathe, every moment of every day. Time is really what causes interest to happen. So um, when, when you're actually get accruing the cost of interest, uh, you might not be paying cash. You might be paying something else. But let's let's assume that you you might just be recording a liability. But in this case, let's assume that you're paying that interest expense right now. So this interest expense right here is going to hit your income statement, and it's going to reduce your net income. This right here, this credit, this credit cash reduces your assets, right? So it reduces your assets. So cash would be debited. Uh, of 400 out of here and I'm, this T account shows it's you know it's it's going to be reduced and then uh, interest expense of 400 right here interest expense 400 is reducing right here your income your income statement which transfers over to your owner's equity right here right so it comes over to your owner's equity and reduces that. So our assets go down by 400 and our owner's equity, which is fed by our income statement, goes down by 400 also. Well, that's great, everything's in balance. But what if, what if we don't actually have to pay this interest expense right now? What if we're actually just experiencing it and we want to write down that we have $400 that we're gonna have to pay in our interest expense uh, and we just wanna mark it, but we haven't paid cash? Well, in that case, that's called writing an, uh, an accrual, and the accrual here would be interest payable, all right? So we'd write something like interest, interest payable for 400, all right? And that interest payable will, uh, again, your, uh, your expense is still on the income statement right here, so you'd have interest expense, interest expense of 400, all right, reducing there just like as before, but instead of an asset, instead of an asset, we're actually going to increase our liability, and this is going to be interest payable. And the interest payable of 400 increases our liabilities, right? Increases our liabilities while our owner's equity is decreased by a debit. See, the credit increases liabilities and the debit decreases our owner's equity via our income statement. And so everything's in balance. So it's either gonna be a cash or uh, interest payable of 400 here. And it depends on the question. And uh, uh, if, you get a, if, you, if you get this marked wrong on your exam or something like that, or a test or something, uh, the, you, you have a pretty good argument that it wasn't specified in the problem. So uh, uh, this right here, these are a couple different ways that you can do it, and both are acceptable because they follow the laws of accounting.